Hello guys, how are ya? My name is Eliza and I wanted to welcome you to my first makeup video. Um, you know, it's not an easy time for any of us, but I thought doing a music, uh, makeup video, music video, I'm not a singer at all, a makeup video would help maybe brighten our spirits a little bit. Um, I washed my hair for you guys. I'm wearing a bra. I plucked some chin hairs. Um, you're welcome in advance. <laughs> so I want to get right into the makeup because I don't want to keep talking because I could do that. Um, so if you can see half my face here, I did an everyday look for you. Uh, this look could be good for people who are over 50 because a lot of uh, when I posted this on Facebook a lot of people were inquiring about how to do makeup for women of a certain age so I definitely wanted to touch upon that um, so this look could be good for a woman over 50 it could be good for a woman over 40 it could be good for a woman over 30 it could be good for a 20 year old with a hangover um, it could be good for a lot of people because it's not really that much makeup and it's also easy to do and it's um, just kind of like a, like a more of a natural everyday look I thought that that would be a good way to start these uh, makeup videos and if you guys like it then I'd be happy to do more videos of you know different types of looks and different techniques and whatnot um, so let's just get into the makeup. So before I do any kind of makeup, I start with a toner. Um, I'm going to list all the products I use for you guys uh, in the uh, description box, um, but I'll just give you a quick little, um, I'll let you know what they're called, what everything's called as I'm using it as well. This is a um, Yes To brand. Yes to Grapefruit um, Daily Exfoliating Tonic. So I'm just using this all over the skin with a cotton pad. So skin prep is very important. Your makeup will never look good unless you skin prep. And I love this one specifically because it exfoliates. So it kind of just gives you like that nice smooth start. I'm gonna go in with a um, Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I love this serum so much. It's super affordable, it's by Neutrogena. You can get it at a drugstore. Um, but the Hyaluronic Acid in it helps bind moisture to the skin. I'm only using about, I'd say, a two peas amount, two peas amount worth. <laughs> um, I'm putting this all over and also I feel like I have to say this I washed my hands with the hottest water possible I've been sanitizing them like crazy in case you're interested I'm using the uh, mojito mint <laughs> whole foods brand uh, hand sanitizer I've been using it like well first of all I love the way it smells and it's probably the closest I'm gonna get to a mojito anytime soon so let's just use it and it's, it smells so good so now we're gonna go in with a daily moisturizer this is by the brand of cure uh, Whole Foods sells it there's SPF 30 in it which you gotta use sunscreen guys gotta use sunscreen so the reason I like this moisturizer is because it's got some hydration definitely to it but it's also mattifying without being drying it's also very nice and lightweight so i'm just putting that everywhere on the skin please excuse my nails um anyone with gel anyone with gel nails knows the struggle right now so i'm not even gonna go into that okay so now that we've done some skin prep I am going to go in with foundation. So this is a foundation I got. I want you guys to all 
hear about. This is by Mac. I used to work for Mac and uh, this, you know, I, I worked for them years ago before I had my daughter and this is still a product that is a go-to for me. It's called Mac Face and Body Foundation. It's a water-based formula and what that means is that it's just very lightweight. It has some hydration to it and it's also a buildable coverage, which is nice because you can use it very lightweight, um, very like more of a sheer coverage or you can build it to a fuller coverage. So what I'm gonna do is take a little amount about a dime size and start just by kind of tapping it into the skin. I'm using two fingers and I'm just kind of doing a sh very um, thin layer all over the skin. Again, using very little at a time. And you're kind of just building up the coverage Don't worry too much right now about blending anything. We're gonna get to that. Right now we're just getting the makeup onto the skin. So, what's also nice about this foundation is that the warmth of your skin kind of helps make this makeup look nice and smooth. So using your fingers, is not the worst idea. You don't really need fancy tools for makeup sometimes. It's not all about being fancy, it's about what works, right? So now I'm going to go in with a beauty sponge. This is basically a dupe for what's called a beauty blender. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but it's a teardrop shaped sponge. The reason these are good is because um, just the shape of them and also the uh, texture of them helps really blend makeup beautifully. You can wet the sponge, which I like to do. And what that does for you is, so I'm actually just gonna use um, a spray by Murad. It's a hydration spray, which I will use later as well. But right now I'm just gonna use it to dampen the sponge. And what that does is it helps the sponge not absorb as much product and it also um, just helps kind of thin out the product in a way to keep it looking nice and smooth and fresh. And it adds hydration as you're doing your makeup, which is kind of cool. So I'm just gonna lightly tap over what I just did with my fingers. I'm gonna now use a sponge just to go over that a bit. And you can kind of see this motion that I'm doing. It's like a bouncing motion. With this sponge, you don't want to do a rubbing motion. You want to do more of a bouncing motion. Rubbing with this sponge really is just rubbing the product away. And you don't want to do that. So. Now. Let's go and do some under eye concealing. I am going to use this color corrector by the brand Essence. Essence is super cheap. I generally use pretty expensive products in my makeup kit, especially with clients and bridal clients and clients in general. But when it comes to myself, I'm happy to use whatever works. I mean, um, not that I wouldn't like to use the expensive stuff on myself, but I'd rather just save that for clients. <laughs> um, but this is something that if you, you know, wanted to use in like your everyday life, go for it. Um, so it's an eye brightener. It has like a, a peach tint to it. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like a peachiness to it and it has a little bit of like a, almost an iridescence to it. What this is good to do with is just kind of tap it under the eye. Also getting into that inner corner here. And just tapping it, just using one finger. You don't gotta go crazy under your eyes. The less pulling and tugging under that eye area, the better. 
Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a concealer. This is the um, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm using the color uh, Canel, which um, works for me. The thing with the products I'm using, guys, is that obviously you need to go to the store or do a little bit of research um, on what color will match you. Generally, if you go to places like Sephora, Ulta, um, any sort of uh, beauty counter, they'll be able to match you for whatever the right color is for you. So, so what I'm gonna do now is just dot about four dots under my eye with the concealer. I'm also going to dot a little bit anywhere I have a blemish or a little bit of extra redness or I just feel like I need a little bit of extra coverage. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take a brush. This is a nice fluffy brush. It's called a duo fiber brush. And what that means is it has natural hairs here, the black, and then the white is synthetic hair. Um, these work great for powders or creams, liquids. Um, because of the synthetic hair here, you can clean them really well. And they just work really great when it comes to using liquid products. So I'm gonna take this brush and just kind of gently stipple slash buff the concealer in to wherever I just applied it. This is just giving me a little bit of extra coverage wherever I needed it. And the nice thing about this technique is that I'm not covering my whole face in a heavy foundation. Not that the foundation was heavy really, but this is a nice way to let more skin, your real skin, show through. Um, I'm, I'm really just using the heavier coverage product, the concealer, just where I need it. Okay, so under your eye. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back in with that damp sponge and I'm going to just kind of meld everything together with that stippling motion again. This is going to help with concealing any lines of demarcation. So anywhere you can see where the concealer and the foundation came together, this is going to help kind of blur that line. So it just looks like one nice smooth situation. And then what's cool about these is also it has like the, the pointy tip too. So you can really get in there under your eye as well, which is great. So now I am going to use a little bit of a setting powder. So to kind of go back to what this tutorial really was all about was a natural everyday look and also catering to women over 50 or over 40, who, who, whoever wants to look youthful and doesn't want to look, you know, dry and not youthful. This is a good way to, this is a good thing to keep in mind. Powder is fine, it can be our friend, but you don't have to go overboard with it. This is a translucent powder by Laura Mercier. Um, again, I'm going to list everything I use so that you don't have to kind of keep going back and forth wondering, you know, rewinding the video to write down anything. I'll write it down for you. So what I'm going to do with this powder is just use the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit, okay? 
I'm gonna use the cap and I'm just gonna tap off that excess just so that there's just very little on the brush. And I'm just gonna very lightly tap anywhere that I see a bit of shine. I'm, again, I'm using barely any product. You don't wanna go overboard with the powder. A sign of youth is glowy, dewy skin with a little bit of a natural sheen to it. You don't wanna totally go, you know, powder crazy and look dry. So you're just using it sparingly. I didn't even use all that was in my cap. So now, now that we've set the makeup and kind of taken away any shine. The thing with shine is that sometimes if you are like me and you have any skin texture concerns, I have um, some acne scarring. So I like to err on the side of more matte in certain places um, because that does help with concealing texture. If your skin is shiny or oily in some places, sometimes that can maximize the uh, appearance of the texture. So you just need to kind of use these techniques to your discretion of what your concern is. So for me, I want to take some shine away because I like to, um, to take the eye away from my texture areas. So I will use a little bit of powder to mattify. And over the day, your natural oils are gonna come through anyway. So now I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass um, bronzer in Nude Bronze Light. I love, love, love this bronzer. It's just so beautiful. It has like that marble kind of quality to it, which is cool because these two colors kind of come together and just create this really beautiful mid-tone bronze that we all want, I think. So the way I'm gonna do the bronzer, and somebody did ask about contour. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like really hard line contour. I do love a little bit of a contour. I love to shape the face a little bit, but you can do that without doing those hard line hard lines of bronzer and contour. And I'm gonna just use that same big brush again. You'll see I use a lot of the same brushes for a lot of my products because I am just, I'm a realist, I'm a mom, I don't always have a lot of time to get myself ready and the less product sometimes the better for me, for myself personally. When it comes to my clients, it might be a different story. So I'm going to use the same brush and I'm gonna start right where my my um what do you call this thing <laughs> my um ear is and my sideburn i guess you can say and i'm just kind of doing this in a nice big circular motion if i had cheekbones this is where you would see kind of this is your cheekbone. You kind of want to use your finger as a guide. You can feel with your finger where the bottom of your cheekbone is. That's where you kind of want to start those circles. You don't have to do harsh, straight lines. You can just still get a nice, soft contour by using a big, fluffy brush. And what I'm doing right now, while you see me kind of going back and forth, is I'm building up the color Bronzing powders are special in the aspect that they are sheer and buildable. So when you go in with them, they're not gonna be like super opaque right at first. You build up the color to what you want it to be. So using a good bronzing powder is great. I also have other suggestions for other bronzing powders, less expensive bronzing powders. This happens to be a little bit of a pricier one, but I love it and I think it's worth it. So now that I've kind of gotten a little bit of a very soft contour in there, I'm gonna bring it down onto my jawline. And when I say jawline, I mean 
right on the edge of where your jaw is, like right on your jawbone. Again, big, soft circles, nothing harsh, and you're bringing it down onto the neck. We never want the floating head. We always want color that is on your face to come down onto your neck. So important. I think most of us know that though. That's an old school mistake I think a lot of us made as teenagers. I know I definitely did. So last but not least, I'm gonna start again from in here and kind of go up. So the best way to describe where to put bronzer is where the sun would naturally hit your face. So I did kind of a three, a number three. So say you started your three from the middle, you would do under the chin and up onto the forehead. Um, the other place I do like to put a little bit of bronzer is right on the bridge of my nose. Again, a lot of people will use bronzer to contour their nose. Um, I'm just embracing my big nose. I think uh, I'm okay with it. It's taken 32 years and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm embracing it. So now I am going to go in with a blush. Okay, this is not what you probably were picturing when I said blush, but going back to the age old, we're trying to look youthful, trying not to use too much powder. We are going to use a gel stick blush. This is by Milk Makeup. This is a cool product because again, it's buildable. It's not powdery, so it's not gonna look dry, but it gives a good amount of color. So again, put this on your finger. I like to use it on my finger because the warmth of your skin again will help kind of melt the product into the skin rather than going straight on with the um, tube itself. So I use some on my finger and I'll just, oh, got a brush hair, kind of tap it right onto the apple and kind of pull it out towards the ear. So blush placement, I guess that's something I can touch upon really briefly. That's gonna differ from person to person. I'm placing my blush on my face to complement my face shape. I have more of an ovul ov ovular, oval long face. So I am using the blush in a consistent amount of color pretty much right across because I am creating the illusion of a shorter face. I'm cutting the face, cutting the face in half by creating that kind of wall of color, if that makes sense. If you guys are confused about um, blush placement and you want a little bit more of a further insight on that, I'm happy to answer questions um, on a more personal basis if you want to message me or um, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one tutorial, like a FaceTime situation, I'm happy to do that because frankly, I'm not doing anything else. So, <laughs> see you. All right. Now, let's go in. That's looking good. Let's go in with some Charlotte Tilbury. This is a flawless filter uh, cream. This is cool. This stuff is, it comes with a wand like this. Um, what this is, is it's kind of like a liquid highlighter. So again, going with the theme of not something super powdery, more of a liquid, more of a cream, more of a gel based product is going to look more youthful. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this onto the back of my hand. So just very little. And I'm just gonna dot that right 
across the cheekbone again with my one finger I'm just kind of dotting that and you can even get fancy and go up, up towards the temple with it to create the the look of bringing up the face a little bit a nice little lift so now that we've done that let's we've done most of the complexion at this point let's go in and do some eye stuff so I'm gonna start out going back with my concealer now let me make a note about this to you guys concealer can be used on the eyelid as a shadow primer it's fine if you are on a budget or you don't you're not a huge makeup person but you want to you know feel good and look good you can use concealer on your lid as a shadow primer and what that means is it will help hold the makeup onto the lid better now with that said um this isn't the option i would use for say a bride or somebody who is going to be under heavy hot lights or somebody who really has oily eyelids or somebody who just needs their makeup to last from morning to night. That wouldn't be my first pick as a concealer. But if you're just looking to kind of go out to dinner or you just are doing a quick everyday run errands type of look, using a little concealer on your lid is fine. It's better than nothing, let's put it that way. If you want um, a better primer for the lid, I would suggest Oh, there's so many, but Primer Potion by Urban Decay is good. I can list some um, other alternatives in the description later. So I'm just going to go back in with that brush we used for the concealer before and do a very thin layer of concealer all over the lid, bringing it up under the brow, all over the lid. So now What's nice about that is it kind of mutes any sort of redness that was in the lid. It almost acts as a shadow, like an eyeshadow in a way, because there is color to it. It's not just a clear primer. There is color to it. So um, there are primers that have color, though. So if you want this same effect where it's kind of helping mute out redness or um in my case I have like some like blue veins and like some other fun things happening it'll help mute that out so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a eyeshadow by the brand MAC I tried to find products that you guys could still purchase now um as a makeup artist and as just a makeup fanatic I have so much makeup um some of it's new some of it's old some of it's um from like limited edition things some of it's from when I worked there at MAC um so I I did try to choose products that if you wanted to go online or um, when we're allowed to go to the store again, go to the store and buy these things that you'd be able to. Uh, so I'm going to go in with this color by MAC called Bamboo. It's just like a nice, super neutral, tannish, um, like a very warm, light, tannish, uh, nudish brown. Okay. I'm just going to go in right into my crease of my eye here. Just in a windshield wiper motion with a brush that looks like this. This is a fluffy blending brush. Um, if you have questions specifically about brushes and where to get certain types of brushes, I can help you with that too. I'm happy to answer whatever I can answer. And I'm just building up the color to what I want it to be. A fluffy brush is great for this because it's not going to create any harsh lines. Um, I'm not going much onto the lid with this. I'm more just kind of 
concentrating the, cre in the crease here. And going back to what I mentioned about the concealer being an option as your um, primer being, you know, helpful is that it does kind of act as almost an eyeshadow, as like a beige eyeshadow. So you're only needing to use a couple other eyeshadows to really create a look and to give your eye a little bit of dimension. So now with that said, I'm gonna go in with this dark brown color here. This is called Ground Brown by MAC. I'm gonna use a tiny little brush. So basically the same idea as the big fluffy brush, but just the smaller version of it. And I'm gonna go into that brown shadow and I'm just going to go right on the outer corner and I'm gonna bring it a little bit in towards the middle of the eye. So inner corner and towards the middle of the eye, close to the lash line. And you can also bring it up a little bit to the crease, the crease, the crease, yeah. So I'm just using this brush and I'm, and I'm not going in with much product. So I dipped my brush in, got a decent amount of product on it and I don't keep dipping in. I just wanna blend out what I already have on the eye. So I'm just using the brush to kind of pull it out towards the center of the eye and again create a nice almost not you know a nice blended effect it's not super harsh lines you don't really see where the the light shadow and the dark shadow meet it's all kind of just one bang so now what I want to do is go in with a little bit more of that ground brown and I'm going to use a um, angled brush, a little tiny angled brush. I'm going to go back into that ground brown and this is a nice option to do if you just want to give your eye a little bit extra definition. You can go in under the lash line on the bottom and just kind of press that dark brown shadow up under your lash line. I'm not going all the way in either. I'm kind of stopping about a quarter to halfway in. Um, I don't want to close the eye in by bringing that line all the way in towards the nose. If you just do it about a quarter of the way or a half the way in, it will keep your eyes looking nice and wide and open and awake. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a black eyeliner. This is um, by Marc Jacobs. This is a really good eyeliner. Somebody on the Facebook feed had mentioned um, eyeliner not staying on your eye. This one I find to be amazing. So this Marc Jacobs one, um, is, it's, this is just like the plain black color, but it comes in a million different colors. You can get it at Sephora, you can buy it online. Um, it has, it's a twist up bottom, so it's self sharpening. Um, what I'm gonna do with this is called tight lining. This is a little tricky at first, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm gonna show you what it is and then I'm gonna tell you why it's probably better for a more youthful look. So what that, what tight lining is, is it's going up under the lash line. I know it's kind of hard for you to see, but it's um, basically putting black liner on the waterline, but up on top, under those top lashes. So I don't know if you can tell, if you can really see the difference, but I promise in person it does make a huge difference. It elongates the look of your lashes and it defines your eye without looking too bold or too, too outdated. You're not doing like a thick line of black liner on top or 
it really doesn't even look like you have liner on, but you're still getting the benefits of having liner on. So that's a that's a great trick, especially for um, women who are older or just want to appear more youthful. It's just like a it's a great way to define the eye without it looking like overkill. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with you know what? Let's do my brow. I think we need it. We need we need a brow. And again, I'm gonna use that brown eyeshadow. This is what I'm trying to do, guys. I am trying to make makeup a little bit more simplified. Again, this might not be what I do on a client, but I am trying to show you makeup right now for the everyday woman who goes to work when they're not quarantined, who, you know, has a life and does things outside of their home. If you just want a very simple everyday makeup look that is pretty universal for a lot of women, I think this is a good start. So again, I'm going in with that dark brown shadow with a um, angled brush. And I'm going to actually start by just very lightly filling in the top of my brow. I like to start up top because again, our goal is to always look lifted and go in the direction of up. We want everything on the face up. We don't want down. So I'm going to start by filling in the top of the brow. And as you can see, that gives a nice cleaner line right there when you just kind of fill that top in. You're kind of outlining the brow, I guess you can say. Um, but by doing it with a powder, it just gives a really nice soft effect. It really depends on the state of your brows, what you are going to use to fill them in. So if I have rather full brows, I always have had them. I used to hate them when I was little, but luckily, they're in now, I guess. And hold on, I need coffee. Hold on. Okay. Um, so if you do have thinner brows, sparse brows, barely any brows, you may need to go in with um, a pencil first or a pomade to kind of draw the brow on, basically. You can then go in with a powder to kind of soften the edges of that, but you may need to go in first with something a little bit more, uh, something with a little bit more opacity. Because drawing a brow on with powder, with an eyeshadow or a brow powder, it could be more difficult. So now that I've done the top, I'm just going to, again, fill in the tail here. Not going crazy. I really like the look of a soft brow. I don't like anything too harsh. Um, but you definitely don't want to ignore your brows either because they definitely uh, make a huge difference when they're filled in. I am then going to use a very small amount of brow powder or eyeshadow and go right under the front of the brow. Okay, do you guys see how I did that right there? Okay, I'm not taking any more product at this point. There's nothing, I'm not, I didn't dip back in. I'm gonna take what I just put on that bottom outline and pull it up throughout the front of the brow and just blend, 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 blend. You want it to look nice and natural. You don't need to make the front of the brow super square. You don't, you, you just go with your natural shape, go with it. Don't try to change it. If you're trying to change the shape of your brows, go to a professional, go get them professionally shaped. But with brow powders and um, pomades and pencils, this is not the way to really, you can, sh you can give the brow more shape, like you can define it, but you can't really change the shape per se. Or if you do, it might not look natural. So I'm just using, using what I got, using the shape I got, and I'm just pulling that 
powder throughout. Okay. So, now, I'm going to show you guys a really cool product. I just bought this. Um, it's by brand, the brand Thrive. I got it at uh, Ulta in Milford. But you can get it... Um, get it online as well I believe what this is is it's a uh, they call it the brilliant eye brightener I'm seeing this this color is called Miko m-i-e-k-o this is cool this is going to go right on the inner corner of my eye and it's just going to create a little bit of light do you see how it did that just brightened up the eye area. So easy, so simple, so quick. They also make that amazing um, lash extension mascara, which I don't have. I used to have. I don't know what happened to it. But this is a cool brand. I like this stuff. So it just added a little bit of a lightness, a little bit of a iridescence in the inner corner, which is cool. I'm going to curl my eyelashes. All right, let, let me teach you something about curling your lashes, okay? Um, I think a lot of women are intimidated by this. I won't lie. It is a little bit of an intimidating thing, look, looking thing. Uh, so what all you're going to do is go in as close to the lash line as you can. You don't have to worry about how strong you're jamming the curler onto your lashes. It's not about the strength. It's about the technique. So once you have the curler on your lashes, you want to gently press your fingers together to clip, to tighten the curler onto your lashes. But you also then want to pull your elbow up so that the lash curler and your eye are parallel to one another. And then just gently pump the curler. Okay. So here's the problem with my lashes. <laughs> um, as you can see, this eye came out pretty good with the curler. This eye, I sleep on my face, I guess. So these lashes never curl straight. And if I didn't sleep on my face, we might not have that problem, but I digress. So, I'm going to go in with this mascara by Dior Show. It's the Pump and Volume Mascara. It's really cute. This is a mini size. I have the full size somewhere. Um, this is my favorite as of right now. I have a lot of mascaras I love. This is a more pricey one. There are drugstore mascaras that are good too. If you want to know some, let me know and I can give you a list of the ones I've used and liked. So I'm going to... Everyone puts mascara on differently, I've realized, but I like to use the little tip of the mascara wand to get those little baby hairs on the inner corner. You really want to try to get all the lashes because every lash counts. And you can kind of see I almost kind of blink my eye. I know some people leave their eye open and kind of just wiggle the brush. It's really whatever works for you and whatever gets the job done for you. I think everyone just has their own technique and what they're comfortable with when it comes to putting mascara on. That's fine. I like to hold the uh, brush vertically to do the bottom lashes. I kind of just go back and forth like that just to get all those baby lashes. And you don't want to put too much on the bottom, obviously, but definitely some. It just helps open up the eye. So, let's, wow, we're getting, we're getting close to being done. I'm going to give myself a little bit of mist at this point. This is the Murad hydration spray that I used in the beginning to dampen my brush. This is such a nice 
spray. Um, if you read the description of it, it says that it can be used before makeup or after makeup to prime the skin. Um, excuse me, it can be used before makeup to prime the skin or after to set the makeup. Um, I love it because it's super hydrating. It smells really good. And it gives your skin just this like nice glow to it. So I, I'm into that. Okay, lastly, I'm going to do some lip. So I did this half, but it's starting to fade a little bit. So I'm just gonna go in and give you the whole shebang all over again. So I'm using a lip liner. Okay, so this lip liner is a cheapie again. This is something I just use on myself. It's by that brand Essence again, the one that um, made that under eye brightener. These are like $4 and you can get them at Ulta. This color is called, it's not It's not called anything because I think I sharpened it too much for it to have a name anymore. But I will do some research and I will find out the color if you care. Um, I'm gonna line my lip. So the thing about lining lips, um, I think a lot of women have a question when it comes to lining their lips. They don't know if it's dated. They don't know if you need to do it. They don't know. They don't know. I it, Listen, it, it, it really has to do with personal preference. But what I will say is you will find over time your lip line will become less defined. Um, so lip liner can definitely help with that. And when it comes to overlining your lips, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. If you want to go slightly outside your lip line, that's fine. Do do what you got to do. But I really try to err on the side of going right onto the lip line. Okay. I also will fill in the lip slightly with my lip liner. Just kind of, I, I find lip liner sticks better than gloss. I'm a, I'm a gloss girl. I, I, I like lipstick. I put lipstick on clients all the time. Um, if you are interested, I can do a whole video on lip products and what I find works best as far as longevity, how long, you know, ones that stay on better. This particular lip I'm doing isn't going to be the lip I put on a bride per se, just because it's, it's, it, I, I might, I might, but I, I would do it with the notion that they'd probably be having to reapply. Um, this is not a lip stain by any means, but it is a nice everyday natural lip option. So now that I filled in my lip with liner and I, I lined my lip and I filled in with liner, I'm going to go in with a lip oil. This is the brand Kosas. I hope I said that right. But this is so pretty. This color is called Malibu. Um, a lip oil versus a lip gloss. Honestly, I think they might be the same thing. But th this, I, I could tell you, feels a bit more hydrating and maybe a little bit less sticky. So that could be the difference there. This color is so pretty. Um, and I'm just going to dot it. all over. So this is the everyday look that I came up with. What I want to do really quickly while I still have you guys is take a little spoolie on the end of, this is just a pencil I have, it's a little spoolie. I just want to kind of blend out my brow a little bit and you can do that by combing the hairs up and over. Okay. Just wanted to have like a nice 
natural shape to it. So now I'm gonna take my hair down so I can look beautiful while I'm at home, not going anywhere. Okay, so I hope you got questions or any requests. Again, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not doing anything. I, I am a mom and I do have to like watch the kids sometimes, but that's what the husband's for, right? So let me know if there's anything you need makeup wise or other, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.